Taking a deep breath in. Hands over your heart, let it out through your mouth. Close your eyes if you feel so called. And just feel your heart. Feel the sensations in your body. Is your body cold? Is your body hot? Are you feeling cold and hot? How do your feet feel? Feel into your legs, <clears throat> into your thighs, your hips, your abdomen, your glutes, and your back, your shoulders, arms, hands. Is there any discomfort? Is there any pain? Feel into your neck, to your shoulders. Feel into your head. Is there anything that is uncomfortable? Does your body feel off? Keep breathing through it. Be patient with your body. Share love with your body. And allow yourself to just be. Allow yourself to breathe into everything, including your head. Feel the sensations in your head. Allow your jaw to drop. Is there any low frequency that you're feeling? And if so, it's okay to feel that. Is there any high frequency that you're feeling? And if so, it's okay to feel that. Just allow yourself to be in the body and to just feel. Whatever it is that you need to feel. Focus on your breath and the sensations in the body. Breathe through whatever you need to breathe through. And when you're ready, blink your eyes open. And just give yourself a hug. Just love on yourself. Because nobody can love you like you can. Feel free to watch this as many times as you need to. 
Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie. I'm here to support you through recovering from religious and emotional trauma and those of us that are healed, I'm here to support you as you keep going because because we may be healed from our past, right? But there's still more lessons, there's still more to learn. So, um, there's been a lot of transitioning for me. I have now moved. It's been a lot <laughs> transitioning. I didn't think it was going to be a lot, but when you have different things in different areas, it it I'm learning. I'm so in tune now that it disturbs. It's almost like a disturbance, like a small little chaotic disturbance. But you know, you just keep going through it, and then by the thirtieth, you know, I closed my business, and then I got the rest of my things. I turned in my keys for both places, and now it's like, oh, okay. Now I'm, I feel more aligned. I feel more with me. So on the podcast that I watch, um, it was saying something about people in your past um, coming up. Um, into your life and for me someone in my past did come into my life and um, that's not what I meant to happen but it did happen and the whole point of the person coming back into my life was so that way I could end it but on a good note I could actually say how I felt about this person and tell them and have an ending because they were not meant to stay in my life continuously. It was just to do what I did not do in the past. Almost like going back and correcting. Because before I, I would just ghost them. and Or they would ghost me. And this time there was no ghosting. There was me saying how I felt. Being vulnerable. Being open. And just leaving it. So um, it felt really good to do that. Um, and, um, it feels good to just be with me and just to focus on myself. And when I was looking at what, where the moon was at that time, the moon was actually in Pisces. So I know I was feeling some of the spiritual part of that as well along with being a little bit discombobulated but I did I felt like I was floating on water um, there's also been a transition for me from uh, one therapist to now another therapist and it's really interesting seeing that because the therapist that I had I was trading with um, He's a Scorpio, and now I'm going to be trading with a Sag, which is interesting because, you know, the new moon was not Sag, and Sag for me is house of income and possessions. And so I'm literally, she's literally going to be doing a technique on me called MFR, which I never fully just had MFR done on me, so it'll be interesting. And since it's my house of income, she had told me a long time ago that she felt like I would want to do it. And so I get to see how that really feels. Um, and interestingly enough, as you may or may not know, on the 7th, the full moon will be in Gemini, which is opposition of Sag. And for me, Gemini is my house of um, others' income death and so it's interesting because um there's a lady there's a client that's been coming to me that is literally mirroring my friend so i'm like wow okay so let's talk a bit about gemini um i don't feel the need to reach out to the book that i usually reach out to because i've learned that sometimes a lot of things that she says i'm feeling so, one thing that I had noticed, and it was even brought out in podcasts and such, I had the first client I had this week, major shoulder problems because of the way he was doing push-ups. Why is that relevant? Well, because Gemini does deal with the shoulders. Gemini twins. 
So when I think of Gemini, when it comes to the body, I do think of the shoulders and the arms and the hands, right? Because they all mirror each other. Um, but in this instance, um, since Mars is still in retrograde, I'm not thinking about the light part of Gemini. I'm thinking about the dark part of Gemini, right? Um, which is interesting for me because I have been um, really loving the dark part of myself, the feminine part, the cold part that needs warmth, that needs love, the um, looking into that darkness and seeing how I can improve, how I can shift, how I can change. Um, and having that dark humor. Um, but another thing about that for me, you know, looking outside and how cold it's been and how dark it's been. It gets dark now. It starts to get dark anyway around 4.30. So that will be changing. Um, and looking in, into the self, right? Because darkness is also about going inside and me being an introspective person. Um, I'm always looking inward, especially more now. So if you're a person that's introspective and you've been looking more inward, well, yeah, that's basically what we do. Um, but if you are a, uh, outgoing person, um, then yes, this is the perfect time also to be outgoing, to go places, to be social, because that's what Sag is all about. Um, and Gemini, Gemini, they can go either way, I feel like. Um, they can be introspective or they can be outgoing, depending on which twin they're, they are. Um, also, I, I think of twin flames. But I think of twin flames with Gemini differently, thanks to someone that I've been watching. When it really comes down to it, you are your own twin flame. So if you want to see your twin flame, just look in the mirror. What is it that you can do, whether you are single or partnered? What is it that you can do for you? Because either way, whether you are single or, single or partnered, the way for a relationship to work is for you to go and work and look at yourself. Instead of pointing and blaming and blaming and blaming. Going inward and looking at the self and seeing how you can shift, how you can improve. Setting boundaries of, you know, this is my boundary. If you're compromising, you know, being willing to compromise, but your partner being willing to compromise. But it all starts with you. It all starts with you. So... There is also that part of the Gemini. Now, Gemini is an air sign. And you'll, you'll note that when we started this, um, I had to breathe. And that's why. Because Gemini is very much an air sign. But also very, very intellectual. Gemini is a very intellectual. They, they have to be right. Right? That's a, that's a Gemini that is, is not balanced if you will, when it comes to one twin, when it comes to the feminine and the masculine aspect, that's how I'll say it. Because they're not connected to the right and left side of their body together. So if they're just right side, then yeah, they're very intellectual, they're very, or if they're more left side, then they're very um, nurturing and people pleasing and stuff, right? So, but how can there be a balance? Because this is what we're going toward. We're going toward a balance. We're going toward something that we have, a lot of us have never been to before. So how can we go there within the self? Um, and the full moon, which will be at its peak on the 7th. What is it that the full moon is showing? Because now, as the dark is being uncovered, what is the full moon showing you? 
Um, when it comes to the cycles, I noticed that there are a lot of us women in our cycles that are literally having this dance with the moon. Right? The whole point of a woman being in cycle is to be in that darkness, right? They used to call it the red tent. And what used to happen is that women would go somewhere alone and things would be revealed from the from the creator to them during this time, which is why I've learned to embrace my cycle. I know not every woman does, and I totally understand because of genetics and such that, you know, some cycles are harder than others. But if you learn to embrace and to just love yourself through that, you get to feel the ups and downs, right, of the cycle, the shift and changes of the cycle. And if you do self-work, meaning muscle work on yourself and things, you you could eventually have no cramps. I mean, the best thing to do before your cycle is to get an adjustment, get a massage, stretch your hips. Because for some odd reason, hips get tightened around that time. So, that's another thing that can be done. So while you're doing this cycle and dance with the moon, see what the moon is revealing to you. So another thing, another planet that's still in retrograde is Neptune, right? So you have Mars, which is fire. You have Neptune, which is the water. What happens when you put fire and water together? As my Gemini client so eloquently stated, steam, right? When things are steaming up, that's fog. You can't always see what's going on. Okay, so there may be some things in life that are unclear. Maybe you're in the unknown like I am. And there's some things that, that you know, it's starting to clear a little bit. Like with me and the guy that was in my life. That was only for a season. It was for me to go back and correct. Maybe that's what's happening to you. Um, maybe you don't know. And that's okay. We still have other plants in retrograde. Right? We still have Uranus in retrograde. Like I said, Neptune's in retrograde. Mars is in retrograde. When Mars goes to red, Mercury's going to be in retrograde. And so things won't be fully seen. Like if you're asking why, that won't be fully answered until January to maybe March of next year, 2023. So, there's a big debate between astrologers. You know, some people say, oh, you know, right now, whatever you're going to do is going to stick. And maybe it will. Whatever promises or things that you put out there. Um, but then others are saying January 1st, if you have a New Year's resolution, yeah, that's going to go out the window. That's not a good time to do that. Fill into it. Mars and I don't get along, yes, but I'm learning to allow it. Not that I have a choice. So allow Mars to do what he does. So that way. He can show me. What it is that I need to do for myself. Right. So Mars being the fire. Mars being the inner war. The inner conflict at times. Which yes Gemini does have. Because they can't always make up their mind. What they want to do. They may want to do something one minute and then the next minute they change. Oh, actually, I want to do this. <laughs> that was yesterday. This is today, right? Um, but one thing you have to give Gemini, though, if they're doing that, that was yesterday, this is today, being present, being here and now, which is why I led you into feeling into your body, right? So... Just feel. Feel into things versus thinking. Okay? Because in reality, from what my experience has been, Gemini, yeah, they can be intellectual. But remember, we have other... We are all made up of all the constellations or zodiac signs. So you can always tap into the Sag of yourself and start to feel. The Cancer side and start to feel. 
the Scorpio and start to feel. Yes, Scorpios can feel when they allow themselves to, when they don't allow themselves to be blocked. It may not be like a cancer, but they can feel. So what will happen if you did feeling versus thinking? Just feeling in and breathing in and listening to your body, which was the whole point of the exercise. Just listening to your body. What is your body trying to tell you? Your body will tell you if you're not supposed to be around a certain person in a certain situation. Right? So, as you breathe through, what is your body trying to tell you? Are you embracing that dark and that light part of you? Are you realizing that you are your own twin flame? And as you love yourself and get deeper and deeper into that love and what that means for you, everything is just going to come together. Now, I know that some people with body dysphoria have a hard, hard time understanding that. And they think that other things are the answer. But what would happen if you did that other thing and it did not work? It really does go down and come down to just loving yourself and your body, even though it's imperfect. But we live in a society that says, no, you need to get surgery. No, you need to um, have this and that done and wear makeup and all this stuff. And I have nothing, there's nothing, I, I don't have anything against makeup. I've worn it from time to time. But what would happen if you just loved yourself? If makeup is a thing, if it's a if it's a focus for you, like I have to do this all the time, maybe not do it. What would happen if you didn't put makeup on today and you just loved yourself for who you are right now in this moment without the makeup? Maybe you're thinking, Stephanie, you don't understand. When I don't have makeup on, I look ugly. Okay. Maybe that's how you look at yourself. What would happen if you shifted that perspective? And said, even though I, I'm not wearing makeup, I am still beautiful. And just fill into that and see how that feels for you. Fill into your heart and see what your heart feels when you no longer have makeup on. I'm not saying stop wearing makeup. I'm just giving this as, a, as an example, as a suggestion, if you will. Okay. So why am I saying all this? Because it is when you're in your divine feminine that you attract your divine masculine. So if you're a woman and you were in your masculine all the time and you were in a hurt masculine, you most likely attracted a hurt feminine. Or if you're a woman that likes other, another woman, you can look at it that way. Same thing if you're a man that likes another guy. Okay. Um, so... Well, what happened if you stood in your feminine, which is gentle and nurturing, yes. And you attracted a divine healed masculine. Because you're a healed feminine. Now, if you're not there yet, that's okay. That's totally okay. It took me nine, a little over nine years to get to where I am. No judgment. Just want you to feel into it. And see what calls to you in this in this video. One of the things that really uh, spoke to me also was what was love for you back then? You know, we've all grown up with our parents' version of love. And so for me, love back then was hurt. And tears, which of course is not love. That's what I thought love was. Love was people pleasing and just, I'm trying to please you so you can be happy, so you can get off my back. That's not love. But in the end, as I got older and worked on myself, when I found love, I found myself. How beautiful is it that when you find love, and you become love, you find yourself. You find out who you really are. And I'm still finding out who I really am. We all are. So it's a beautiful thing. So one thing I love about Geminis is they don't mind being straight, direct, and to the point. Um, some of them like to be right. Right. 
everybody's different. But then Gemini's have that other side, which is where we are right now. And I, and I know and I feel like it's this dark side, this feminine side that really helps them. So how do you know that this applies to you? Well, if you are Gemini Sun, Gemini Ascendant, and Gemini Moon, if you have planets, uh, let me see, Gemini would be the third house. So if you have planets in the third house, um, this applies. Um, or if you have a lot of planets in Gemini, this also applies. So that's all I'm really feeling today. Um, this is just a time of flowing with all the different elements. You know, I mentioned fire, I mentioned water, and then Gemini's air. You know, if you're introspective like me, great time to be alone, great time to meditate, great time to just feel into things. And take your time and be patient. Way to do that is to be patient with yourself is what I'm learning. If you're outgoing and you're social, maybe talk to your friends about this. You know. If you've had things come up from the past and you're like, why is this coming up? So that way you can see it in a different manner. Now me, that happened for me with my parents and I came to the exact same conclusion. That they did the best that they could, even though I think they could have done better. But what can I take from that and apply to my life? And what can I take from that that sh they have shown me? Yeah, that doesn't work. Don't do that. Maybe this is you. Maybe there's a relationship that is coming back up and you feel like you're looping. Well, you're looping because there's something you're not understanding. And so now that partner or that friend or whoever... They're there to teach you the lesson that you're not understanding. None of this is bad. Right? Mars and Venus don't literally work for me. But I don't look at it as a bad thing. I look at it as, okay, so they're going to show me something. And then you have Jupiter and you have Neptune. That are my guides. That's how I look at it. So, if you feel like you're, we've been going a little nuts, a little crazy, it's okay. If you've been losing your words like a lot of people I know this week, that's okay. We're all transitioning and transforming. Because those of us that have healed from our past and we're transitioned, when the transition is on, over, you get to transform. And it happens and happens. And you see it outside. I know I do. I see it outside of me. Right? The feminine side also has a lot to do with death. There's been a lot of death. A lot of souls leaving their body. A lot of death in relationships. A lot of death of the self. Right? Transition. That's what death is. Death is a transition. It can be a physical transition, it can be a spiritual transition, it can be an emotional transition, it can be a, just a transition in life. It's all okay. So, if you like this, just like, subscribe, and share. And know that you are loved. And that nobody can love you like you can. Enjoy the full moon. Enjoy what grandmother shows you. And I will talk to you soon.